Mr. President, will you attack North Korea? Flanked by his Secretary of State, U.N. Ambassador and National Security Advisor, President Trump is turning up the heat on North Korea for a third time this week. Late tonight, asked, is the U.S. going to war? I think you know the answer to that. I want this, our nuclear arsenal, to be the biggest and the finest in the world. And we've spent a lot of money, a lot of time, and a lot of effort. And it's in tip-top shape and getting better and getting stronger. And until such time as this scourge disappears, we will be so much better and so much stronger than anybody else. And nobody, including North Korea, is gonna be threatening us. One huge X factor in all of this is, of course, President Trump, who, as Ian reported, has threatened the North with, quote, fire and fury. And as Ian just mentioned, South Korea is calling on the U.S. to deploy its strongest strategic assets. That could mean reintroducing nuclear weapons. And ABC's David Curley is at the White House for us this morning. David, good morning to you. Good morning, Paula and Dan. There was no word from the White House overnight, but this morning, a strong rebuke from the president of North Korea and some criticism of a U.S. ally. In a series of tweets starting at 7.30 this morning, the president calling the North Korea action a, quote, major nuclear test, adding, quote, their words and actions continue to be very hostile and dangerous to the United States. He called the North a rogue nation, which has become a great threat and embarrassment to China. And then he went after the U.S. ally South Korea, saying it is finding, quote, as I have told them, that their talk of appeasement with North Korea will not work. They, the North referring to, only understand one thing, but the president doesn't say what that one thing is. We do know, confirmed by South Korean sources, that H.R. McMaster, the national security advisor here at the White House, did talk to his counterpart in South Korea overnight, a 20-minute phone call. The South Koreans had been warning that the North might test a nuclear weapon any day now. Mr. Trump has been talking to those in the region, talking to the Japanese leader yesterday, the South Korean on Friday. Some very strong criticism from the White House this morning. North Korea has revealed further details of its plan to fire ballistic missiles into the sea near Guam. It's now specifying it will launch four intermediate-range missiles in the coming days. While most experts believe this is yet another bargaining chip for the regime's political gains, South Korea's military has sent out a strong warning against Pyongyang. Kwon Jang-ho starts us off. On Wednesday, Pyongyang announced it was carefully examining an operational plan to launch a ballistic missile strike in the areas around Guam. On Thursday, the North said they are seriously examining that threat. Extra details were announced on North Korean state media, saying that the plan entails launching four Hwasong-12 intermediate-range ballistic missiles. It said the rockets will travel over Japan exactly 3,356.7 kilometers for 1,065 seconds and hit the waters around Guam 30 to 40 kilometers away from the island. Reiterating Wednesday's statement, the purpose of the strike is said to be to deter U.S. military assets from mobilizing from the island and to send a message to Washington. The plan, it said, is set to be finalized and reported to Kim Jong-un by mid-August. South Korea's Joint Chiefs of Staff, meanwhile, have issued a strong response to Pyongyang's threat towards Guam and other recent threats to South Korea and the U.S. They said it's a serious challenge to the Korean people and the South Korea-U.S. alliance and warned the regime against carrying out any action. If North Korea ignores our warning and carries out this provocation, they will face strong and firm punishment from our military and the South Korean-U.S. alliance. China, a very much a key player, a neighbor of North Korea, an ally of North Korea. They're saying the foreign ministry that the all sides should be cautious with their words and actions. They do say that the, through the state media that if North Korea strikes first, they will stay on the sidelines. They will stay neutral. But if the United States and South Korea stage their own preemptive strike, then China will, in the words of the uh, media, prevent it. Another ally of the United States weighing in, in proximity to all this, Australia, its prime minister saying that if anything goes down, it stands shoulder to shoulder to the United States. And is there more reaction from the Korean Peninsula? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. On both sides of the DMZ, uh, South Korea, uh, the defense minister saying to his troops, 
that he they should stand in a heightened readiness just in case there's any provocative moves from the north he underscored and we just heard from Pentagon also underscoring that starting on the 21st U.S. and South Korean uh, forces will stage joint military exercises as planned that's another thing that's gotten North Korean a little bit upset from the regime of Kim Jong-un today we get something out of state media a little bit of peace uh, the mainland of the United States should not feel safe according to one official editorial the regime would use in their words ultimate means if anything on your happens. Uh, one upmanship, very dangerous on both sides right now. No question. Today on the sun-drenched beaches of Guam, a tale of two islands. Tourists enjoying vacation, while Homeland Security officials issue stark warnings. What to do if North Korea carries out its threat to lob four ballistic missiles in this direction. In the event of a missile attack, do not look at the flash or fireball. It can blind you. Take cover under a concrete structure or below ground. Lie flat on the ground and cover your head. It could take 30 seconds or more for the blast wave to hit. And if caught outside, shower with lots of soap and shampoo to help remove radioactive contamination. Washing hair and taping window sills and stuff like that, that's kind of new to us. This is a weapon that we don't want to mess around with. North Korea's military says its missiles would drop fear into the United States, splashing down in international waters 20 miles off Guam. At that distance, this is roughly how close the missiles would come to shore. Guam is still visible on the horizon. It's roughly a 20-minute boat ride back to land. These 15 sirens, all at low-lying areas, would warn the public of an imminent threat. Not far from the sands where families frolic, B-1 bombers sit ready to launch. Our motto is ready to fight. The wing mission right now is to provide President Trump with any options. The military ready to go. Uh, he has disrespected our country greatly. He has said things that are horrific. And with me, he's not getting away with it. He got away with it for a long time between him and his family. He's not getting away with it. It's a whole new ball game. And he's not going to be saying those things. And he's certainly not going to be doing those things. Uh, I read about we're in Guam by August 15th. Let's see what he does with Guam. He does something in Guam. It will be an event the likes of which nobody's seen before what will happen in North Korea. It's not a dare. It's a statement. It has nothing to do with dare. That's a statement. This morning, Mr. Trump using another bullhorn, tweeting, military solutions are now fully in place, locked and loaded. Should North Korea act unwisely, hopefully Kim Jong-un will find another path. Warning leader Kim Jong-un. And this man will not get away with what he's doing, believe me. And if he utters one threat, in the form of, a, of an overt threat, or if he does anything with respect to Guam or any place else that's an American territory or an American ally, he will truly regret it, and he will regret it fast. U.S. President Donald Trump has warned the Democratic People's Republic of Korea that the U.S. military is ready to deal with any missile threats. He's not going to go around threatening Guam, and he's not going to threaten the United States, and he's not going to threaten Japan. And he's not going to threaten South Korea. No, that's not a, a dare, as you say. That is a statement of fact. NBC's Peter Alexander Please. pressing him. Mr. President, what do you mean by military solutions are locked and loaded as it relates to North Korea? Well, I think it's pretty obvious. Uh, we are looking at that very carefully. Uh, and uh, I hope that they are going to fully understand the gravity of what I said. And what I said is what I mean. In terms of being locked and loaded, the U.S. military is always at a heightened state of readiness on the Korean Peninsula. Pentagon officials tell NBC News so far they haven't moved in any new military hardware and stress the region is already armed with deep penetrating missiles, B-1 bombers in Guam, Navy destroyers and submarines.
The North Korean government is firing back at the president's stepped up rhetoric, accusing the U.S. of driving the crisis to the brink of a nuclear war. Tonight, international partners from China to Germany are urging all sides to turn down the heat. The president defiant. My critics are only saying that because it's me. If somebody else uttered the exact same words that I uttered, they'd say, what a great statement, what a wonderful statement. I know that President Obama said global warming is the biggest threat. I totally disagree. I say that it's a simple one. Nuclear is our greatest threat worldwide. Not even a question, not even close. So I'd like to denuke the world. I would like Russia and the United States and China and Pakistan and many other countries that have nuclear weapons get rid of them. But until such time as they do, we will be the most powerful nuclear nation on Earth by far. Tonight, Guam caught in the middle, paradise in the crosshairs.